Hello, good day everybody. Welcome. We'll be looking at the third series on why programming can be easy. The reason I believe programming can be easy. So if you've been following the previous two papers, you would have been familiar with the pattern of each slide. The reason for this paper is to encourage anyone interested in being a software developer and secondly to show some similarities between human language or human society and programming language. Terms used in this paper, lowercase pl means programming language, lowercase hl means human language, uppercase hl means human life. Words in double quotes are words you should pay more attention to the spelling. So the first reason we'll be looking at is building blocks. In most programming language, modern programming languages, we have what we call the frameworks, which are actually building blocks. So these frameworks makes it easy and fast to develop a program, to write a program or to complete a project. The building blocks will come with tools that would undo most of the commonly expected uh, tasks when you are building an application. So popular frameworks include Django and Flask, which is used in the Python environment, and uh, of course React, which is used among uh, JavaScript developers. The second reason we're looking at today is uh, origin stroke siblings. Generally in life, when a new thing is created, it's created by taking components out of an existing thing and then um, improving on it. So the same thing for programming languages. Most have uh, similarities, they have origins, they have siblings. So what you need to do when getting into software development, once you are able to master one programming language, you can easily move to the similar programming language and then use the knowledge you have from the first programming language to start developing on the second and, or with the second programming language. So origins or siblings includes um, Scala from Java, Visual Basic for applications from um, um, Visual Basic, C Sharp from Java again, Lisp and Clojure, Pascal and Modular. So these are some examples of uh, languages that are very similar because one was modeled after the other. The third point is uh, graphical user interface GUI. So similar to an architect's drawing board or an artist's studio. Most uh, programming tool comes with uh, the graphical user interface, which is very similar to an architect's drawing board or an artist studio. So just picture an artist studio. There are various tools the artist will have to pick when he or she needs to draw, paint, erase, color and do several other things. So the same thing applies to programming. The GUI comes like a studio with all the necessary tools that you just pick, drop, and then start doing what you need to do. So this is actually the reason why some programming language end their IDE with the name studio. Example is Visual Studio, Android Studio, Aptana Studio. So the fourth point I would mention today is error handling. Now, in real life, the role of a public relations officer includes, or in fact, it, the major role is actually to keep a good image of a person or company, even when the person is having a bad character. Now, in programming language, we have our own PR mechanism. By this, I mean, even if a code is going to have an error, 
we have what we call the try catch error block statement, which is common across um, most of the programming languages. This allows you to be able to trap an error. The error is existing or might exist in real life or during um, the user working with the program, but is not visible because you've created something inside the program to prevent the error from really throwing out and then to ensure that the program keeps on running. So this is an example of um, the PR in modern world is what we call the try catch error. The next point, which is the fifth point I want to mention is that in human life, objects can have similar attributes. E.g., a football team will have a coach, an assistant coach, a captain, a goalkeeper, etc. These are common to most football teams. So in a tournament, you expect this set of people to be present in each team. Now, in PL, we know how to handle such, and we do that by creating classes and defining the attributes of each class. So a class created for cars, for example, will have uh, such attributes as the car name, car manufacturer, engine capacity is the car using fuel or electric, year of manufacture, etc. So this the tool ensures that uh, when a programmer is going to develop an application, you can actually, when planning your development, you've decided the number of possible groups you would have then start creating the classes and put as many attributes as possible so that you can now uh, call those attributes, call the classes and then assess the attributes when you are working with the classes anywhere within the program. Now, where you, uh, when creating the classes, you have to be sure you've either created it to be uh, available throughout the application, which is what we call scope, I had discussed about scope, public, private, in um, one of the previous two lectures. So please look at it to understand what scope is. So the scope of a class will uh, ensure that the class is visible throughout the program or just within uh, is a particular model. So the next point is uh, all human beings, they come from someone or we are all from someone. So basically, we are all giving back to, we have parents, we have grandparents. So by this, I mean genealogy. So in programming, we have how we create a genealogy. And this is what we actually called inheritance. So what inheritance does is, uh, it makes it easy for us to reuse items or objects or classes by creating new items from existing ones. So you are not uh, going to be redoing or redefining everything from the scratch every time. If you've planned your program well, create the possible classes, you can then, when creating new classes, use inheritance as a means of creating the new classes from the existing um, classes and then assessing attributes and then you know, go on with your program, it makes your development fast. In fact, it also makes your, your program clean because you can now um, have a form of trail that these are the classes, these are where these particular classes are um, inherited from so that you can, if need be, make corrections to the codes. So the second point and final point I'll be looking at today is what I call, uh, what we call a garbage collection. So garbage collection is simply a way of reclaiming of memory occupied by objects or data that are not in you. So, I can liken garbage collection to a stationary vehicle on the road. Now, the road is for vehicles to move from one place to the other. So if there's a vehicle that is stationary, is not moving, maybe it's, it's damaged, uh, broken down, ATC, it's going to disturb the flow of traffic. So the towing company will probably come and you know, tow the car away so that there will be free flow of traffic. The same thing, computers, when developing um, programs, we have a similar mechanism. This is what called garbage collection. So once a particular object or class is idle, is not alive, is not in use within a program or a sub-program, it might have been used before, but it's currently not in use. The system has 
an automatic way of taking note of it and then it will go pick up where you created the classes or the objects and take it free up memory keep it somewhere and then whenever you need to use it again you call it you use it after a while it's um, freezing freeze the memory so basically this is for memory management to ensure that uh, your program runs fast to ensure that uh, uh, in modern day we call it um, efficiency you are using the least resources per time to achieve the best goal so that's the seventh point we'll be looking at and the final point we'll be looking at today so just like previous uh, slide um, previous um, papers I will not mention any programming language here as my preferred or recommended one because my opinion will be subjective based on the programming language I work with. You can watch my first video in this series to see the points I mentioned you should note when choosing a programming language. So conclusion, the world still needs more programmers. It's a field that is still evolving after decades of existence. I thank you for watching this uh, paper. See you next time. And I end by saying,